Gail Collins, No Stopping Us Now, A History of Older Women in America. Enter the captivating world of A No Stopping Us Now, A History of Older Women in America by Gail Collins. As she interweaves historical events and societal expectations that have impacted women, particularly in their twilight years. This in-depth book summary chronicles the experiences of older women throughout history, from their roles in the family, the workplace, activism, and evolving cultural views on aging. Discover the brave personalities who, despite numerous obstacles, helped to elevate their generation and demolish ageist stereotypes. Immerse yourself in this intricate tapestry as you explore the myriad ways older women have shaped and continue to enrich American society. Aging in the 1800s In the 1800s, aging was considered a blessing due to widespread diseases. Churches and farming communities had their own ways of treating elders, albeit with respect. Women whose husband dies governed their land. Widows outnumbered widowers, and many preferred the freedom that came with widowhood, which let them manage their own money and run businesses. Women in Literature Through the Ages Women's roles in literature and society have changed over time. In the 19th century, books and magazines taught social graces and emphasized a woman's role as a wife and mother. Sarah Josepha Hale and Lydia Maria Child were influential writers during this time. Frances Willard fought for temperance and believed alcohol destroyed families. In the 1920s, youth was lauded and the elderly were considered human junk, but in the 1930s, middle-aged women were celebrated as more than just beautiful mothers or grandmothers. Marjorie Hillis's Live Alone and Like It and Helen Gurley Brown's Sex and the Single Girl highlighted the importance of enjoying yourself before settling down. Brown transformed Cosmopolitan into a chic lifestyle guide with sex as its constant theme. The Changing Standards of Beauty The definition of beauty has evolved over the years, from the narrow 19th century standards that relegated women over the age of 29 to the margins of society, to the present day embracing of older women as powerful and stylish. In recent times, major fashion brands have started using women in their golden years as cover girls, while the cosmetics industry offers products not just to help women look younger but also to prolong their lives. This shift in attitudes towards older women is particularly significant given that older women today have a higher median income than men in their early 20s. The AARP and other organizations have also embraced the idea that grandmothers and older women can be sexy and fun, a far cry from the horror stories and criticism that plagued an earlier generation. However, not everyone has caught up with this new narrative, as evidenced by the comments from some political figures about the age and looks of their opponents. Despite this resistance, the idea that older women have much to offer has gained ground, and it is now widely acknowledged that they can be powerful, beautiful, and inspiring. The History of Menopause In the past, menopause was viewed as a period of decline in women's lives. Doctors believed it indicated a loss of a woman's value, halted her sexuality and destroyed her overall health. Sigmund Freud even claimed menopausal women became petty and stingy. However, attitudes shifted in the 1990s when the U.S. Senate considered hormone replacement therapy, HRT, and viewed menopause as a natural part of life. Jane Fonda's book, Women Coming of Age, also helped shift the perception of menopause by encouraging women to embrace it as a new phase of life. Today, people view menopause as a normal life transition rather than an illness that requires fixing. Women as Agents of Change The role of women in various social reform movements from the 19th century to the 1970s is explored, highlighting their contributions towards creating a more just and equitable society. Women have long been at the forefront of social reform in America. In the 19th century, Women gathered at clubs for educational lectures while advocating for abolition of slavery and advocating for African American rights. The clubs became a breeding ground for activism, particularly among African American women, who gathered for support and mental feasts. Women such as Lydia Maria Child believed that an active life was the best defense against aging. 
Abolitionist Harriet Tubman was a prominent activist who not only lectured but also opened a home for indigent older black women, where she eventually passed away. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Mary Harris, mother, Jones used their age as an advantage to reduce their audience's fears about the radical nature of their speeches. Mother Jones even exaggerated her age to impress people and urge them to be more aggressive in their efforts to reform the world. The generation gap was most painful in the ranks of middle-class women who had run the clubs, spurred the reform movements, fought for the right to vote, and written all those essays on how the key to combating age was getting involved in things outside yourself. The progressive era created factions among women's reform movements, and the younger generation found their elders insufficiently ferocious. The new members of the National American Woman Suffrage Association sought inspiration in the London suffragette movements where women chained themselves to fences, adopted hunger strikes and disobeyed laws. Petitioning for state referenda seemed dull by comparison. During the New Deal period, women were finally able to participate in politics, bearing active reformist agendas. Frances Perkins became the first female Secretary of Labor, and Barbara Armstrong helped design Social Security. Mary McLeod Bethune became the head of Negro Affairs at the National Youth Administration, making significant contributions to creating a more equitable society. Finally, in the 1960s and 1970s, women continued to be powerful agents of change. Members of the Women's Strike for Peace organization used their well-dressed maternity to demonstrate against nuclear war, while Maggie Kuhn founded the Grey Panthers after being forced to retire at 65. This book summary shows how women have always been active agents of social change. It is a testimony to their perseverance and unwavering belief in creating a more just and equitable society, irrespective of their age or socioeconomic background. Women's Struggle in the Workplace A journey through history to uncover how women have been treated in the workforce, from motherhood being their only role to being financially insecure in old age. The journey of women in the workforce has been littered with obstacles, from 18th century men taking over roles traditionally meant for women to domestic work being the only option where African American women prevailed. The Great Depression showed how companies thought women should not be working, with Congress making it illegal for government agencies to hire married women, and the loss of more than 50% of black women's jobs. Even those who managed to stay employed received less pay. The two world wars and booming manufacturing industry in the 1960s helped women make strides even if it remained low-paying clerical work. Despite this growth, mandatory retirement and the demarcation of old age at 65 still remained a struggle. Even today, over half of women over 65 are financially insecure, 16% live below the poverty line, and one-third of American women aged 55 and older are still working. Discrimination against employees because of age is still present, and the average woman's annual social security payment remains nearly $4,000 less than what men receive each year. In conclusion, the path for women in the workplace has been a bumpy one filled with barriers that they must continually confront. As we continue to make strides, it is essential to challenge the societal norms and outdated laws that stand in the way of gender equality in the workforce. Gail Collins' illuminating book, No Stopping Us Now, offers a fresh perspective on the history of women in America, with a focus on older women who defied expectations and navigated boundaries to make significant contributions to society. The summary captures how trends, such as activism, menopause, domestic roles, and employment, have shaped women's lives over the centuries. It also highlights vital evolutions and the inspiring individuals who paved the way for breaking down stereotypes and ageist barriers. In essence, this fascinating work not only chronicles the history of older women in America but also reveals their resilience, steadfastness, and ongoing significance in building a more equitable world.